Welcome back. In this video, we will be exploring how to plot influence lines using the equilibrium method. So from previously, we learned that determinant structures, the influence lines are always straight lines. And so what this will enable us to do with the equilibrium method is to recognize discontinuities in our structure. Uh, we will keep moving our unit load around and we'll use equilibrium to determine or solve for the desired response as we move this unit load around. We'll keep moving the load to new positions, especially like right before and right after the discontinuity, and then we'll be able to plot the influence line. All right, so let's take a look at example two. Uh, here we're asked to draw the influence line for AY, BY, the moment at point B, as well as the shear at D. And so we'll start here with the influence line for AY and for BY, and so I'm gonna work with them together. Uh, to do this, we'll create a little table uh, to just as we move that one kip unit load. Uh, and it doesn't have to be one kip. It can be one kilonewton. It can be one, you know, elephant, uh, whatever you'd like it to be. Um, but it's good for it to be a unit load so that we can scale it up to other values as your structure experiences other moving loads of not, uh, you know, one magnitude. Um, so here, I'm just going to draw a picture of the structure. And so with the equilibrium method, we're just going to move this one kip load around. So right now, I have the one kip drawn on my free body diagram at x equals 0, which is right above point A. And I want to then figure out what is the value of the reaction for A and B. Uh, this is fairly simple to do for the reactions. Uh, so right when the 1 is at point A, right, AY is one kip, BY is 0. Likewise, we can look at another value, so at x equals 10 feet, so this is at point D, so this is right in between points A and B. And so I'm just going to, you know, I erase my load, my load, my one kip load has moved over 10 feet, and now I'm going to just use equilibrium, just use statics to solve for what the reactions are. So I could sum moments about point A to solve B. I can sum moments, you know, I can sum forces in the y direction to get A, Y, and B, Y. In this case, it's uh, fairly straightforward because uh, we just have the two supports when the one kip is right in the center, half to both sides. Next, I'll look at X equals 20. And so here I've now put it right over B. Again, this is pretty simple. Uh, a, Y is going to be 0. B, Y is going to be 1. All of that one kip load will be going directly into that roller support. And lastly, I'll look at a point where x equals 30 feet. So this is when the value of the one kip load is at point C. And so when I place the one kip load there, I need to figure out what the reactions are. This is maybe not as straightforward, so I'm going to use statics to solve for this. So I'll have some moments about point A. That gives me by times 20 feet minus one kip times 30 feet equals zero. I can solve for by. This will give me a value of 30 over 20, or 1.5 kips uh, upward, and then I can sum forces in the y direction to solve for AY. Uh, AY would now have to be negative 0.5 kips, or now pointed in the downward direction. And so now with these values for AY and BY, I'm ready to plot the influence line. So I just go through at x equals 0, AY is 1. You know, I know at uh, halfway between points A and B, uh, it's going to be a 0.5, and then 0, and then a 0.5. And I do want to note here in this video, I, I made a mistake, um, that 0.5 is drawn as if it's at point D, but it's not at point D, it's at a point 10 feet, um, at x equals 10 feet. Um, and so later in, uh, in a subsequent, uh, later in this video, we'll be coming back up here, and I'll be actually moving it. Uh, so just make a note that that is wrong. Uh, we can also plot the values for by as shown. Next, we want to look at the influence lines for the moment at B. And so uh, when we do internal forces, it might be a little bit more difficult. Um, so it, it won't be quite as easy as the reactions, but it's, it's not too bad. Uh, the thing is, again, we're just moving that unit load to different positions, and then we're going to be solving for the internal forces at that particular position. So sometimes uh, when we solve for internal forces, it does require us to know the reactions. So having already solved for the influence line for the reactions will help us uh, with solving for the internal forces for both the moment at B and the shear at point D. Uh, so when I look at x equals 0 feet, the moment B is 0. When x equals 20 feet, the moment B is also 0. 
Um, so basically, when the value is over support directly, there's no bending going on in our structure, right? I can look at x equals 10 feet, so this is halfway down the length, and now I want to study a free body diagram. And I could I could have done this free body diagram for positions 1 and 2 as well, at x equals 0 and x equals 20 feet. Uh, so when I draw this free body diagram, I'm just looking inside of what uh, that uh, magenta circle is, and I draw my internal forces. And I drew these internal forces using my positive sign convention. Um, and so I, pu I put the internal forces. Well, right now, the one kip load is not there, and I really have no other loads acting on this. So if I sum moments about B, I just get that the moment at B is zero for all cases, right? So whenever the one kip load is not in this free body diagram, I don't have a moment at point B. So that means it's going to be zero from x equals zero to 20 feet. Now, once it goes beyond 20 feet, I now have this one kip drawn into this uh, free body diagram. So for instance, at x equals 30 feet, I have the one kip at the far end. And now I actually, you know, when I sum moments about the cut, I also, I, I get a value for MD. And I can solve for what this value is, and right now it's saying it's negative 10, right? So negative 10 kip feet. Um, because I consider a unit load, I just have the quotes around the one. It doesn't have to be one kip. It could be a kilonewton. We said uh, we could make this very generally applicable. I'm going to take the values I just solved and plot them for the influence line uh, for the moment B. And you can see here, I just moved uh, the influence for AY and BY. I just moved it over to properly match uh, in the center there. All right, plotting the influence line for the moment at B, I've gone through and I now get a negative 10. And so you can see it's straight along the portion and then after uh, the roller, I get a change. And so that's the idea here with the different discontinuities along the length of the beam. I want to repeat this process for the shear at D. And so with the shear at D, I'm going to sketch out this free body diagram uh, for the cut at D. and so I have my pin, I have my internal forces, again, drawn in the positive sign convention that we adopted in class. Now on this free body diagram, I actually have a y. So whenever I move this load around, I have to consider what a y is going to be. So for instance, at x equals 0 feet, now that one kip load has moved uh, over directly over the support. And I am able to solve for the shear at D by summing forces in the y direction. Um, here, because AY is equal to the one kip, the shear at D, VD, has to equal zero. I'm now going to move the one kip load directly before point D. So that's going to be like at x equals 7.9999999 feet. Um, so right there, right before the cut. So that in this case, the load is still on my free body diagram. Uh, when I move it over there, I need to consider what AY is. And so I need to solve for, from my influence line for the reaction at AY, I'm going to solve for the value at point D. You can do a similar triangle to solve this. And, uh, you know, in this case, I found that it was 0 0.6. Um, so hopefully you saw I drew that up there on the influence line for AY. So if AY is 0 0.6 and I have the one kip down, I can sum forces in the Y direction and solve for shear D. In that case, the shear at D would need to be a negative 0.4 kips. Um, so it has to be negative because it's opposite the way I drew it in there. Because um, I need to have you know, 0.6 now, and then the negative 0.4 would actually be upward to counteract the 1 downward. Uh, now I'm going to shift that 1 kip load over to a point x equals 8.0001 feet. Um, and so it really doesn't change much in terms of the reaction A, Y except now it doesn't show up on my free body diagram. Um, and so now when I sum forces in the y direction, I see that VD just needs to be 0 0.6, and it needs to be acting downward to counteract AY, so it's now positive 0 0.6. And so I plot that, you know, that would be directly after, once that unit load has shifted past D, it jumps up to 0 0.6. Um, I'll now move it out to x equals 30 feet. Uh, and when x equals 30 feet, we used our influence line for the reaction at A. Uh, we found that AY was really a negative 0.5 kips uh, when x equals 30 feet. And you can go back up to our influence line for AY to find that. Uh, if you sum force in the Y now, 
uh, we see that VD would also have to be negative 0.5 uh, to balance it. And so I plot that. I can draw the influence line in place, and you can see that this would be the end result. Uh, not surprisingly, when uh, the one kip load is at point B at that roller support, uh, the influence line for shear D is zero. All right, so hopefully uh, that was uh, made some sense for the influence lines using the equilibrium method. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to try to make this a little bit faster, and we'll use something called the Mueller-Breslau principle. Um, and so this will take advantage of uh, some you know, rules here with the determinant structures, with the influence lines always having to be straight lines. Uh, we can then use the Mueller-Breslau principle along with rigid body rotations uh, to quickly plot the responses for the influence lines uh, for different, you know, structural values that we are interested in. All right, I'll see you soon.